Shalom, Shalom, Akiyam. First and foremost, I would like to give all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem Raka Kwedash. I would also like to give a double honors to the elders and apostles of the Great Millstone, where I learned this 144% truth. I would also like to say peace and salutations to the hopeful elect, starting with the 144,000 men of Israel, which consists of the servants, the prophets, whom have been ordained since the foundation of this earth to sing this new song, which comes in the form of this gospel, which will be preached throughout all four corners of this earth and rest upon the heirs of the innumerable multitude, men, women, and children of Israel, who may be scattered throughout all four corners of this earth. It's just Bayan back again through the spirit and power of Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai. And I just wanted to get into a brief lesson and Lord willing, uh, share an article with you, Akiyam and Akwaf, uh, going into some information uh, regarding uh, these uh, handbooks that were given to these uh, police in various cities in Babylon uh, regarding um, the chariot sightings, man. All right, and before we get into the lesson, I want to say, uh, you know, happy, you know, Day of Atonement, you know, to you be loved, you know, Akiyam and Akwaf, Lord willing, um, you're fulfilling your lot and taking part in the Day of Atonement uh, and, you know, showing great reverence to your power, Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, and afflicting yourself with, with a dry fast, which it shouldn't be your first dry, it shouldn't be your first fast of the year. I do want to make note of that. You know, we, we should practice fasting throughout the course of the year, whether it be intermittent fasting uh, or, you know, dry fast, liquid fast, food fat, whatever. We should be fasting throughout the year as good practice, you know, in efforts to, you know, build up the spirit, you know, because as we, um, you know, the more you, you know, sow to the spirit, the, the, the less the flesh will be able to consume and take over you, man. You know, we're going to go off from time to time regardless. You know, but ultimately, you don't want to be a, um, you don't want to be a slave, you know, to the flesh. So we do want to practice, um, you know, these spiritual um, weapons we have in the form of fasting, uh, which is a strong, which is a strong uh, spiritual weapon when combined with prayer. You know, so we should be practicing fasting throughout the year, um, leading up to this atonement. But needless to say, hey, Lord willing, this is edifying to you, Akiyam and Akwath. Uh, and this lesson is not going to be long. Uh, but yeah, man, like I was saying regarding this article, you know, they've released um, these 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 handbooks, man, in efforts to pretty much vet their cops into being able to tackle uh, scenarios um, when these uh, aerial phenomenons take place, man, and, and are reported upon. Okay, and hey, we're in the time, man. Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, all right? He's visiting the world which he made, man. And it's beautiful because at the end of the day, you know, those of us in the truth, those of us in this know, you know, we understand that it's Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, the chariots of Israel, man, visiting this place, man. Okay? We understand these things, man. We know that our, our salvation draweth nigh based off these uh, signs that we're seeing in the heavens, man. Yahweh Shai warned us of these things, man, in efforts for us to get ready for the deliverance, man. You see? So through the spirit and the power of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, let's start right here. All right, let's go to the book of Luke. Now, as a matter of fact, let's go here first. Let's go to the book of Habakkuk, chapter 2, and verse 14, and it reads, For the earth shall be filled with the knowledge of of the glory of the Lord Yahweh, as the waters cover the sea, man. Okay, and whether you people believe it or not, okay, the earth is now filled with the knowledge and the glory of the Lord. And the the the, the prophets, the servants, the watchmen, okay, the sea is a bringing forth that knowledge and glory, man. And ultimately, Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai is showing signs as in these chariots, man. Okay, uh, expressing his wisdom, all right, to these Edomites, man. Okay, that can't comprehend uh, what these what these uh, objects are, man. Okay, they can't they can't um, they can't even understand they don't even understand how these things defy the laws of physics, man. 
they can't put these they can't put these objects in the box, okay? Uh, regarding uh, you know things that they can measure on the planet, okay? Based off the ways that these things move, how they how fast they go, how they can manifest and just disappear. Esau Edom, the so-called white man, in the form of these these scientists, man. All right, that are working for the global elite. They can't put these things in the box, man. Why? Because you can't put Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai in the box. His wisdom and knowledge is none of this world, man. So what makes you think the chariots of Israel will be anything comparable to any device that you can compare on this planet? You see? These are the chariots of heaven, man. The chariots of Israel. All right? And Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai is going to come and deliver his elect in chariots, man. Pursuant to Matthew 24. Okay. Matthew 24, Revelations 11. Okay. That's how the Lord's coming back, man. <laughs> okay. Hey, and when the, and when these chariots begin to manifest uh, uh, more intimately before the eyes of you people, man. You people are going to be giving up the ghost, man. As it tells us in Luke 21. Let's go get it. That's where I was going to start. The book of Luke chapter 21. And let's start at verse uh, 25, and it reads, Red letter, Yahweh Shai speaking. And there shall be signs in the sun, and then the moon, and then the stars, man. All right? And these chariots that we're, we're seeing, they call them UAPs, uh, UFOs, aerial phenomenon, so on and so forth. And we know those are the chariots of Israel, man. And these are tokens that our salvation draw of nigh. Okay? This is a token, man. That our deliverance is near. And upon the earth, the stress of nations, with perplexity, the sea and the waves roaring. Right, man. On the upon the earth, distress of nations. Look around the world, man. Look around the world, man. There's uproars of the people have happening all over the world. Look at the east. You see? And it says with perplexity, right? And when you get this, when you get this word. Perplexity, it says what? Google definition. Perplexity. Inability to deal with or understand something complicated or unaccountable, man. And this is what these uh, UFOs, they call them in the world, the like and unto, man. The chariots of Israel. Okay? They're unable to understand or, or, comp or, um, or deal with, man. They're, bewild they're bewildered. They're confused. Let's get some similar words. See, bewilderment, puzzlement. You see? <laughs> and comprehension. Okay, they can't comprehend what they're witnessing, man. That's why they had to come up with this uh with this handbook, man. We're gonna get it. Right? Luke 21 and 26. Men's hearts failing them, man. People are gonna be giving up the ghost. Why? For fear, man. And for looking after those things which are coming on the earth. For the powers of heaven shall be shaken, man. Right? The elites are going to be shaken out of power. Via those ICBM missiles. Via World War III. You see, but prior to that, things are going to be happening, man. Divine intervention is going to be taking place on behalf of the elect. Okay? And men's hearts are going to be failing them, man. When these angels, man, which are the brethren, which are our brethren... Stop manifesting on this planet, man. Close up and personal with you people. You people are going to be giving up the ghost, man. Hearts just busting out your chest, man. Okay? And Esau's already feeling the pressure. Because he can see things with that big-ass telescope he got. Okay? He has more of an understanding. And the phone chimed in. He has more of an understanding of what's happening in the heavens than you people do, man. You see? Let's go here. All right? This is from RT. RT News, and it's uh, dated September 10th, 2024, two days ago, right? The title reads, Clear and Present Danger, U.S. Police Given New UFO Handbook, man. What do you think this handbook's going to do for you, man? <laughs> okay, what's it going to do for you? You all right? These, 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 uh, the chariots of Israel are going to continue to manifest. They're going to start dropping down real low, too. Right? Police have been given guidelines on dealing with sightings of anonymous objects in the sky, man. 
Like the brother said, I can't, which it's probably going to be filled with ways of deceiving you. Okay? Telling you it's little green men or what they found out via uh, Area 51, so on and so forth. Because Esau is a liar, a deceiver. He's deceptive. See? But those of us that know, we know exactly what's going on. Police officers across the U.S. have been issued a handbook on how to deal with reports on unidentified anonymous phenomena. That's what, it, that's what UAP stands for, right? The guidelines, which detail several past encounters, were sent out earlier this summer by the Major Cities Chiefs Association, which represents police executives from the larger cities in the U.S. and Canada. Okay, because mind you, the sightings, the most of the sightings are here in the in the west, in the north in the northwest. Okay, when you do your research, most of the sightings are here. Because this is the target that Yahweh Bashim Yahushai has in his crosshair, pursuing the Isaiah 63. In the 11 page guide, <clears throat> the Major Cities Chiefs Association uh, notes that UAPs, again, which are these uh, unidentified, unidentified anomalous phenomena uh, detected in US airspace, represents a domain awareness gap which possesses which possesses a clear and, and present danger to pilots and our soldiers that is more acute than ever, man. It also re cites reports by several government agencies, such as the Office of the Director of National Intelligence, concluding that such phenomena are also a clear threat to national security since their capabilities and origins are unknown. You see, and this is why Esau, Edom, the so-called white man, uh, manifested the sixth branch of military in the form of the Space Force years ago, a couple of years ago. Because they've been seeing things in the heavens, man. They were, they were just able to hide it and conceal it. Because Yahweh Bashim Shai wasn't making it as well known. But now, of oh, this thing spiraling out of control for evil E, man. Okay, because we're in the time of deliverance, man. We here, Akiyam and Akwaf. Let's go here. I'm going to put this um, article in the uh, description box, Lord willing, as well. So you, Akiyam and Akwaf, can read it in its totality. Now, let's go here. Let's go to 2nd Ezra's. Chapter 6. Chapter 6, verse 1. Let's start at verse 17, and it reads, And it happened that when I had heard it, I stood up, up upon my feet and hearkened. <clears throat> and behold, there was a voice that spake, and the sound of it was like the sound of many waters. This is talking about Yahawashai, the sound of many waters. How do we know? Let's go here real quick. The book of Revelations chapter 1. This is talking about Yahweh Shai, right? In verse 15, it reads, And his feet like unto fine brass, as if they burned in a furnace, man. So Yahweh Shai was a very dark-skinned man from the tribe of Judah, pursuing in the book of Hebrews, the seventh chapter. And his voice as the sound of many waters, man. See? So this is Yahweh Shai, okay? That Ezra's uh, uh, heard. Check it out. Continuing on. Second Ezra 6 and 17, and it happened. And when I had heard it, I stood up, I stood up upon my feet and hearkened. And behold, there was a voice that spake, and the sound of it was like the sound of many waters. And it said, Behold, which means look, the days come that I will begin to draw nigh and to visit them that dwell upon the earth, man. Okay, and when this starts to happen in this perfection, you people are going to be giving up the ghost. We read it in Luke 21 and 26. You people are going to be giving up the ghost, man. Okay, but it's happening on the low level now. Okay, this is why chariots are sightings, chariot sightings are being seen. Okay, things that can't be explained the way are happening in the heavens. Okay, check it out. 
and will begin to make inquisition of them. What they be that have hurt unjustly with their unrighteousness, man. Okay? And the Lord's going to make inquisition on Esau, Edom, the so-called white man. Because they're the ones that hurt unjustly. Okay? Matter of fact, when you get this word inquisition, it goes into what? Bear with me. Inquisition. A period of prolonged, intensive questioning or investigation. Okay? And this is happening in the form of the spirit of the Lord's mouth, which are the servants, the prophets, man. Some similar words. Interrogation. Questioning. Right? Cross-examination, right? We're doing these things when we do these digital epistles, aiming at Esau, when we're on the highways and byways, aiming at Esau, man. Yeah, man, we're bringing out testimony, man. We're bringing out evidence on you, man. Court is in session. You're being examined, man. Okay? We're fact-finding on you, man. Okay? It's time for you, okay, to uh, to be, to be, to be uh, revealed. Pursuing the second Thessalonians, the second chapter. We're in that time, man. Okay? That's part of that. that, that that's part of the uh that's part of the, the Lord visiting. Okay? You're you're you being found out, man. Right? Second Ezra six and nineteen from the top. And we'll begin to make inquisition of them what they be that have hurt unjustly with their unrighteousness. And when the affliction of Zion shall be fulfilled. And this is how we know salvation is drawing nigh, man. Because these things are taking place. This is how we know the affliction of Zion, which we always go into it. Zion is to Zion in the Hebrew. In the Lashawan Kodash, which goes into monument, memorial, or a parched place. Okay? Which a parched place. You water a parched place, man. And now we're now being watered with this word, man. The true and living water. Okay? On the way to salvation. All right, to Zion, to, which is to Zion, is also another name for Jerusalem. Okay, which we know Jerusalem is like in, unto a people before it's a place, man. Okay, which is a so called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans. So, yeah, man. We're coming into salvation, Akiyam and Akwath. It's plain. It's plain to see. Okay, this is why, all right, the, the, the report is the same. Okay. For you so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans to repent. Why you still can? Why? Because the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And you do not want to get caught in the crossfires, okay, of the rage of the Lord, man. All praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Raka, Kwadash. Double honors to the elders and apostles of Great Millstone, where I learned this 144% truth. Lord willing, you Akiyam and Akwaf were edified. Shalom.